says I'm live. Ooh, so I just got cut off in my last live. I don't know what happened, but anyways, hello again, YouTube friends, reseller community, and my phone is going off. That person's just gonna have to wait. Let me let me just turn that down. See, noob. I'm a noob on YouTube. <laughs> Forgot to turn the phone down. I kind of have to have it, you know, at least around her. Uh, because I got kids in school. So, anyways, welcome back to my channel, Borderline Horderish, where I am apparently living it up on YouTube today. I figured I might as well get back on since. I don't know what happened. I mentioned the word Wi-Fi. We're not going to say it too loud because the last time I mentioned it, how I just got it, then YouTube decided the connection was going to be difficult. Mm. No good. <sighs> what are you going to do? So that's all right. Worked out because I went and look at my dog. Oh, I love her so much. Isn't she just as cute as you're so sweet? Oh, I am a sucker for some animals, let me tell you. Wanna we'll get up here? Come here. Okay. Violet, my little violet rose, my corn dog. Queen, corn, queen, 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 queen. That's her song. Coin, coin. Look at she got a fro, yo. Sorry, how did you say real? But isn't this amazing? Violet makes so many people's day. My mom says she's ugly. Sorry, don't listen, Maya. She says that she is ugly, red dog. And I think she is beautiful. And I love her ears. And she's a great dog. She makes so many people smile. She's my car dog. And I take her I take her in the car whenever I get the chance to, um, especially if I'm going to get my daughter from school, I take her in the car or I'll take Violet with me to drop my daughter off. Um, and Violet loves to look out the window. So she'll stick her head out the window. Go on, go on, go lay down. She'll stick her head out the window and her little fro will be like, and everybody that looks and turn, you know, turns to look at her smiles. Like it's such a beautiful thing. It's okay to have big ears, huh? Yeah, you're a sweet girl. Oh, anytime I talk to her, then she's got to come around. So anyways, since I got booted from my last live, like whatever, 10, 20 minutes ago, I grabbed some things to maybe share, see if, uh, Maybe it will help you, maybe it won't. And also maybe to ask y'all for some advice. You know, I'm learning too here. Uh, just because I'm dabbling in things that I'm not normally used to selling, but. Um, so I was gonna show you one of the things I bought, one of the very first things I bought. That was, I didn't do what I should have done, which was research it. But I bought this little tin container, a biscuit, cookie, tin. Uh, I saw it and I thought it was really cool, you know, right away. And then either way, I figured I was going to use it, whether it was necessarily worth anything. But so when I got home, I had pulled up, you know, the same container, took my little picture, had eBay search it. And eBay pulled up you know, some comps or comps that were really pretty good, you know, 20 bucks or 30 bucks or something. And I bought the thing. It was during the, the Goodwill that I went to had a thing where if you bought 11 items that were 99 cents, you would get them 50% off. So I did that and that just happened to me in one of those. But so really I didn't have a lot of money invested in it, but I just wanted to show you, you know, uh, an example and kind of a lesson that I learned was I looked it up and it wasn't, you know, worth really anything. Um, 
it was bringing up comps of the real deal. And this was the problem was this is not the original. The original had a, um, a you know, marking on the bottom. But I've learned a lot how, depending on what it is, but marking or labels or some type of, it, unless you're, it's your niche and you can just identify it you know, really quick that it kind of does matter unless you know an item is really going to be worth your time. And I guess that depends on what you think is worth your time. But, you know, I mean, do you really want to post an item and only make a penny off of it in a whole day? Not really. So it's good to you make it sort of worth your while. Unless actually I can say unless unless you're first starting out, you for sure want to make profit. But because eBay limits you on how many things that you can post or listings you can post, then I also think, you know, it's important to make sure to really get that feedback so that you can get bigger limits or whatever. Um, but this little tin ended up being my storage container for all of my goodies, things that I need or use a lot in my business of reselling and that's you know ebay i know i talk about ebay a lot but i also do local sales um i haven't done them kind of in a while as many local but i was pretty much before i got really really into you to you know it was consignment shops selling in consignment shops um selling local doing garage sales um i listed for somebody who would do garage sales, the list, the person that I was listing for would do garage sales um, every weekend that it was warm. Uh, you can't do that everywhere. There are rules on how many garage sales that you can do in a lot of places, like so many per quarter of a year. But I guess around here, you can just have as many garage sales as you want. <laughs> in the ghetto. So here's my little treasure trove of goodies. Of course, I got a little lint roller, and this one is kind of cheese, but for smaller stuff, it works really good. And it, I think I, there was a couple of them in a pack, and I'm pretty sure I got it from the Dollar Tree. So it was, it works out perfect. If you have to go over, you know, something really big, then you fill the thing all quick. But this is what I was using before I found these light bulbs that I now have. Um, and it was a smaller item. I was actually, I got these, I don't know. I guarantee you, I barely paid anything for it. But I got these and um, like I would attach them, they have a little light. The light is really quite terrible. You can't even really see it, but. And so things like small items, super, because though, you know, I like to post uh, or list pins and just smaller items is a lot of things that I, I like to, it was cool to use for some jewelry. I'm not very good at jewelry. And in fact, that brings up a question maybe I have for you and, or for anybody watching as a reseller, I can't figure out what to do necessarily with. So I, I like to buy bags that are 99 cents, you know, or cheaper than that. I find them not like every day. Can I find them but when I do, if I can visually see, an item that I could make profit off of and make it worth my while. So, you know, it obviously if I come out, you know, at least making my 99 cents back, like that's cool, but that's not really going to do me too well. Um, so I want to at least make it kind of worth my while. Like I'm not going to go necessarily work. You know, want to make minimum wage would be at least all right to make per hour. Uh, so yeah, I bought, I buy all these 99 cent bags and now I am kind of sitting on all this jewelry. Now here's my issue. I am not well versed in jewelry or costume jewelry and I, I pulled kind of what I know, but I don't know what to do with the rest of it. Should I lot it? I mean, I don't have any testers or anything. I would like to get some someday, but you know, I could sort of tell. It's just, I think it's like taking me um, kind of, it takes up a lot of time to, to figure out what everything is because I've never been really necessarily a get glitz and glam kind of girl. 
this is one of the things that I really like to use though when I'm looking at jewelry uh, or coins or something. It's pretty, it's pretty cool little, oh, man, am I glass. I don't know why I always keep going up like the camera. <laughs> oh boy, crazy. Mm, I'm so crazy. Just kidding. Maybe I am. Here's my little magnet detector that I like to use. Uh, I don't even know what this came off of, but it came off something. I like to use it to test. I, I do have bigger magnets, but thanks to having a pacemaker, I um, can't really... I worry too much about having a magnet right here within a certain area of my pacemaker, which is right here, because you're not supposed to have big giant magnets like that around. But of course I have my measuring tapes. I have a couple. They're little this is a blue one. I also have a yellow one. And sometimes I put, depending on what it is, I'll post one of the last pictures with this you have the tape in it, the measure, measurement, like if it's a necklace or if it's a small item, I'll just post it with a quarter, you know? Just to kind of show size. I do like to try to use my time wisely, of course, but also you have to kind of, <laughs> Um, I guess, let's see, what's the best way to put it? Treat your customers as though they know nothing or are a child, I guess, because they're going to ask you a million questions if you don't just be specific out the gate. And like I was just talking in one of my last lives about the importance of, of certain details. You know, there's a, a YouTuber, a reseller that I, I like um, her name, Susan Wells. I can't remember what her channel name is though, off the top of my head. But she always talks about, you know, people come to her and they'll say to her, um, you know, why isn't my stuff selling? And, and she'll be, she'll go down this laundry list of things. Well, do you have this? Like, you know, is your title, for example, is your title all in bold, like all capital letters? Um, if it is, you need to change that because there, there's a lot of, if you go and you find something on eBay, you know, you search for it and you're like, sell similar item. Like it's going to copy down, you know, the title and stuff and some of the main things from it. Um, but it will keep the, you know, all the letters capital. And that is kind of like yelling, yelling at people. And I totally can agree to that. I think that that is so, so very true. So true. But she goes down the laundry list of what's important. You know, do you, do you have a description or a condition of the item? Obviously if it's new and it's in a package, then you don't really have to do anything, but put that it's new or, you know, click the little new thing. But condition is, is kind of key and you can kind of rate it as good, very good. Um, you know, on Amazon, they have the acceptable or whatever it is, but you know, I do good, very good, um, excellent you know, to like new, or if it's somewhere in between, I'll even type, you know, that in, but I'll also put somewhere why I've, I've kind of seen people go both ways in the actual description of something. I've seen people be real short, you know, and it really, it works for them. I mean, heck, I've even seen pe you know, people who have a ton of feedback with some not so great pictures, but you know, and I'm more power to them. I think it's important to take the time to do those things. But um, you know, Susan Wells, she talks about that too, about you know, taking a photo of your item and making sure that at least your first screen is of the whole, you know, as close as you can get to the whole item, just having the item. Because on when you're looking it up on your phone, you know, if you have something that's really far away, it's gonna look really little. And you have to think like one, like a little kid, they're going to visually go for the thing that's visually better. 
you know, and I'm sure even there are people I'm like that, you know, that I'm going to, if somebody takes the time to go that slight extra mile, I'm going to think, well, they probably took care of their item, you know, a little better. If they took the time to take a good picture, then they probably took the time to take care of the item or whatever it is. You know, so I've seen people go both ways in the fact of the description being real short, you know, being like, this is this as is blank done, you know, or people do longer descriptions, um, really long. I know that most people don't read all the way down uh, on average, I think, but for my own sanity, I like to put down everything that I need to put down. And the reason why I have that kind of in my head is because of number one past, past jobs I've had, but also it cuts down, I think, on the question aspect, um, you know, them going, well, I don't know. I don't know if the item has chips or if they really described that or just put as is or whatever. Um, I think when you say selling as is, is kind of very like Ugh, in your face. I'd rather say item is, you know, in good to very good condition. Uh, please see pictures for details. I take pictures of every flaw possible. Or that's easily seen. Um, and then I'll either, sometimes I'll take something and I'll point to the flaw, depending on what it is. If it's a higher dollar item, then I will maybe put more details or take even more time to be super specific, but it also cuts down on the fact that I haven't had any returns and there's probably a reason why, you know, I haven't had any returns. The only time that I've really messed up um, was I tried selling or posting golf clubs and I did not know that if there's a P on the golf club, that doesn't mean just putter. I guess it could mean pitch, pitching wedge or something too. Don't ask me. Um, and that, so yeah, I put putter and when the person got it, it wasn't a putter that they thought. I mean, sorry, it wasn't a pitching wedge like they thought. It was a, um, something like that. Anyways. So I just don't, uh, I hear that, you know, some golf clubs can really do well, but it was interesting to try to shift that for sure. For sure. That's another thing that I do put in all of mine. And this was a suggestion from my mom, actually, who's been in the eBay business since eBay existed. You know, so if I'm going to go for anybody for advice, <laughs> she's a pretty good resource to go to. But she, you know, also puts in them that she's like, and I do this, you know, that we use recycled shipping materials whenever possible, you know, blah, 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 something like that. Um, and I, I do that because, and a lot of times my boxes are new, they are new, but you know, maybe the, the inside will be tissue or, you know, something. Um, I don't ever, I make sure it's not dirty or anything like that, but I have been known to do a little bit of dumpster diving. There's a dumpster that is just re recycled materials that I've come across. So it's, it's not junky and I've found quite a few good things from it. Yes. Yes. This was another thing. I was talking about this. The yes, it sounded all like I'll go me or fancy. saint. <laughs> I hope nobody's ever offended by my probably not very good accents, but whatever. So I got this. I found this right in a uh, 99 cent bag. Um, there were all kinds of them. I tried to search to find if I could figure out how to find this person. And I, I hope, I don't know if anybody has an idea on how to do that. It's such a common name, and that was kind of my problem. But I think it would be cool to figure out, you know, where it went to, you know, or how it even ended up, like, in a bag of a bunch of stuff. You know, it made me kind of sad. But the cool thing is, is so the pins, some of the pins that I did sell from it, um, I got some really great feedback and like, for example, one of them was from a gentleman who had apparently lost some of his world war two pins and the specific thing that was listed on it. Like that one was, I think a rifle. 
Um, and so he was really happy and really grateful that, you know, it could be replaced and he could put that on his jacket. I thought that was cool. I think history is really cool. I really like to sell things that, I don't know, excite me. And I think that that's why I've loved being a reseller for so, so, so long. I mean, I've been, I used to, I, here's an example of how, I mean, I've always tried to be, been kind of hustling about making money, especially when it was needed. Um, I used to make yard art, like trash to treasure type of yard art and sell it. Uh, bows, um, making bows, getting ribbon on clearance or using ribbon that I had. Um, that was kind of before all these little separate little smaller platforms came to be. I mean, I even think that I'm not sure even Etsy. Yeah, Etsy was around then. I'm pretty sure. But I've, I've uh, definitely tried quite a few jobs to or different ways to make money. I've been a bargain hunter for a long time. For real. <laughs> Especially because my, you know, my family used to run that consignment shop when well, my parents owned it. And then a few of the kids ran it. So I learned a lot. And then I listed for somebody for like a year. And so I was basically kind of learning on their dollar. And that was really what pushed me, honestly, to just start because I had gotten it down. And for my own brain, you know, that was better for me to not go so cuckoo crazy. But, you know, it's important to be kind of, I guess, organized about it, especially if you're first starting. But it's not it's not necessary. You need to know the basics. Like the shipping is probably the most, and the fees thing. Now, if you don't, if you're too worried about it, about not making money off of something, then maybe you shouldn't list it right away. You know, you should try something else. I mean, getting some up is really one of the best things just to start getting that feedback and yes, things up. So I noticed, I don't know if anybody else noticed this, but when you list things mobile now, this started literally in January, that it automatically clicks on global shipping for for you. So I have been doing most of my items that I've just kept it like that, but it kind of annoys me that things are like that. that it just automatically goes. Just like the make an offer thing, that if you make an offer, then they – We'll pick it. eBay will pick it for you. And then you have to erase it if you don't want an offer for anything. I do offers on all of them. You know, I don't necessarily take every offer, but just like Susan, that lady I said, she says, and she's so right, you know, that you need to go through. If things aren't selling, there's a reason why. You know, um, I mean, even social media is kind of, the similar in the fact that there's an algorithm for it that, you know, if you're just not going into your eBay store at all for days, like no wonder you're not selling nothing. Even if you can't list something, just go in and end an item. You know, I wouldn't suggest doing ones with people watching, but I, sorry, fail fail on my part for having my phone not <laughs> turn down. Uh, I still don't know how to function this thing quite well. Because I just got it as a gift over Christmas. Blessed I am because there ain't no way I would have bought that thing <laughs> on my own. Um, but that's what I was singing, singing the other day when I was feeling all alone on my live. But today's went well. I just, I got kind of cut off, which is all right. I mean, I probably should go in 10 minutes anyways. Because 
I haven't listed anything in my eBay store today. Here I am trying to give you all. If you get every day, you should do something. I like to schedule them. That's what I, I scheduled all my posts out over the weekend, which worked out really well. Really well. I was really excited about that because it, well, I wasn't trying to think about it when I was hanging out with my kids, you know, and we were doing acrylic pours, which I just show them off again. I thought these were so cool. Yeah, so easy. They look so beautiful. It's like the ocean. It makes me want to go back to Oregon and look at the ocean. What are you barking at, fucking girl? There's somebody else on? There's somebody else on? I don't see no one. Queen, what are you barking at? My dog's barking at something outside. Probably a squirrel. Who knows? Those big old Dumbo ears. She can hear everything. There's another one. Doesn't that look like the ocean? I really should do a video, I think, on these because I think it's fun. I love art. I love painting, really. But this is not my style normally. So this was kind of out of my comfort zone, but it was really fun to do because my kids both could do it. This is more my style. Like I painted this. I don't see what this is. January 2018. I've always thought about trying to sell my art, but I just haven't. I don't know. I just haven't. I don't ever want to lose the passion of doing it, you know. Like, that's one of the things I love about reseller or being a reseller is I love it. I've always loved it. Always. And. You know, I choose to not list too many clothes just because I don't like it. And I figure if I have the opportunity to source what I want, then I'm going to. I get that depending on the location that you're at, that some people can't you know, do that. They don't have that opportunity. And you need to just do what you need to do, especially if it's you know kind of your only line of income. I would never suggest just quitting your job what you know and um, jumping into ebay without really knowing what you're doing definitely but you, you could make money um pretty quick you have to keep in mind that like paypal you know that there's a holding fee on things and so right away you might not get things instant but i guess i don't know i went and got so i ordered I use my coupon, my eBay coupon, um, which I'm actually going to hold on one second. Hopefully I'm still on the camera here. So yeah. So if you go into your eBay, I was trying to remember exactly where it was to find it. Somebody the other day asked me that. So if you go under your eBay, your seller hub and go to marketing and then go down to your subscriber discounts uh and the ebay ebay shipping supplies right there is that's your coupon which is awesome because i got all kinds of bubble mailers the uh, fourth quarter or maybe it was before that but i got these the last time and so I used my thing. I think it cost me, and I think I paid a dollar or something. There's a ton of them. I'm sure it was a hundred of them. But this time I ordered some poly mailers without the bubble part in them and the bigger ones because I um, I needed them. That's about the only thing that I'll I get. Well, besides bubble wrap, I do I do buy bubble wrap, but everything else I pretty much find or have kind of access to or coupon or just watch even good in goodwill if you go to the party section right and get into those they're kind of scary bins but it's usually all like their little craft thing craft stuff ribbon or you know in bins or whatever but you can even get tissue paper for cheaper you know there was one time <laughs> i didn't have any i didn't have any bubble wrap and i um 
con- I don't know, was it? Oh, it was when I had my pacemaker, so I couldn't drive to go get some. That's what it was. So I used my paper shredder, and I had all this paper that I pulled out of, or that was pulled out of some dumpster or something like that. Um, so I put it through my paper shredder, and I filled this box with neon pink paper. <laughs> It was clean. It was brand new. It was wrapped in a cellophane and everything when I got the paper, but I didn't pay anything for it. So, you know, do what you got to do. It shouldn't be an excuse necessarily of cost on shipping supplies. Now you might not be able to do something right away. You might have to go hunt for it or go check out some dumpsters. Ask your family and friends, somebody, what I guarantee you somebody's moved or has moved or has boxes from moving um that you could use really and then the post office of course they you know have stuff um you can order stuff from the post office shipping materials so there really just shouldn't be you know any excuse on in that department of a cost um i will say this though i'm gonna say a pet peeve i know i'm trying to keep positive vibes up on my channel borderline hoarderish but do not be that person who orders stuff from the post office and doesn't use it the correct way. Because we have too many people doing that. It's going to ruin it. It is going to ruin it. And that opportunity to get things free is going to go away. So, yeah. Please don't be that person. No, we can't be friends. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I mean, I get do what you got to do. You know, if it's to get bread or something, feed your kids and by all means use the second box, but uh, I don't like when people kind of take advantage of opportunities that we have. And that's why opportunities that we have go away. Uh, I do know that certain times of the year, if, you know, you have to wait a little longer if you're going to try to order it from the post office. And yes, of course, all the postage rates are going up. I don't know if anybody uses pirate ship, but I will, you know, post, ship my stuff or make my labels, pay for my labels through eBay it's discount, you know, or use pirate ship. And I've done enough to where I know which one's going to be kind of cheaper, but I highly suggest if you haven't signed up for pirate ship to do so, because it, it has saved me um, money. And especially with the rates going up, I think, cause they're already kind of ridiculous. Um, I think it's worth it to get to use pirate ship. I actually told my mom about that and she didn't even know about pirate ship. She had, I don't know, some business account through the post office. And then also my, my stepdad used to work for UPS. Uh, he just retired, not like a, well, it was a year ago, November. So, but yeah, so she had kind of a lot of opportunities to not have to necessarily worry about shipping things. Uh, I just do the post office. I don't really go through UPS, but the post office uh, is half a mile from me. It takes me one minute to drive there. And if it's small enough, another reason I love smalls is because I don't have to wait in the line, you know, for anything. I could have a, somebody come pick it up, but I would rather make sure that I know if it's a high dollar thing, I won't drop it in the the little mailer thing. I'll go in there. Um, I try to go in there, you know, for higher dollar things or for sure bigger things. Um, the post office people always tease me. They're like, are you the one filling up the whole mailbox? And I'm like, oh man, I mean, I'm really not. I'm really not doing that. If I have that many, then I either need to schedule a pickup or I'm bringing it in. And they're cool about like when, it pays off to be nice to people because they'll there's, you know, you can just, if it's already got postage on it, you can set it to the side. You also have to be able to kind of trust, you know, cause you want to know when it's going to get checked in or whatever. But I have a really good relationship with the people in the post office. Cause I've seen them for years now before I started eBay or started even listing for eBay. Um, I tried a few direct sales companies. I'm not trying to knock direct sales. I just, only part that bugs me 
about that community is uh, like a boss or being your own boss. I don't technically know if that's being your own boss because you're still working for somebody else's dollar. So, and it just wasn't my style anymore, you know, to, to do that. Um, I've learned a lot, so I don't regret it by any means. Um, it's made me a better person to do that, to do those things. But uh, it wasn't as easy as a lot of people kind of made it out to be. And uh, I like being kind of more in control, you know, of what, of what happens. So that's one of the reasons I like to just re I resell. I've had quite a few jobs. Uh, that sounds bad, right? Oh, I've had like 10 jobs. Well, most of my jobs I've had, I had for a long length of time or overlapped them having multiple, you know, different jobs. Um, like for example, I was a manager of a restaurant and then after that shift, I went and was a hostess slash waitress somewhere. Um, I owned a cleaning business. Well, I started out cleaning for somebody else. And then I realized, well, this is kind of silly. Why don't I try to make $20 an hour, $30 an hour, whatever it is, over the $10 an hour I'm making working for somebody else. And let me tell you, being a maid or a cleaning lady or whatever you want to call it is hard. Hands down, one of the hardest jobs because you really have to book it to make it worth your while um, just because there's so many kind of businesses out there that you are able to, to send uh, multiple people out or, you know, to only charge you know, $40 or whatever it is. And so if you're trying to clean a whole house for $40, that may sound great and all, but top to bottom cleaning $40, maybe it'd be four hours, but I doubt it if you're doing top to bottom, you better be cleaning some small place. <laughs> that was hard. That was hard. And in fact, that was when I had my seizures because uh, supposedly my body was in like so much pain from doing that, that it was my brain's way of shutting things down. And so I just, I couldn't do it anymore. I liked it in the aspect I met some really amazing people. Um, I learned a lot. I also, um, you know, it was kind of humbling. Uh, people definitely treat cleaners different, for sure. For sure, they do, which is, I don't know. I mean, it would be cool someday to have a maid and hire a maid, but if I ever do that, I, I can tell you this, that I'm not going to treat them like they're, the gum on the bottom of the school desk, slightly chewed or something. Ay, ay, ay. Ay, ay, ay. It was cool, though. I mean, I didn't have to really deal with people, but I'm so OCD about the things in my house that it was definitely hard to try to do you that. Know, I was good at it, though. It taught me a lot. I tried to do... Um, like eco-friendly cleaning, which was cool because there weren't necessarily a whole lot of people trying to do that and still aren't trying to do that. Vinegar, baking soda, those were my best friends. I still use those a lot, a lot, a lot, actually, in getting hard water off and, um, you know, cleaning a toilet if you, or even if you have a drain that's kind of being a little difficult. Um, like I will run hot water or put baking soda in, you know, to a drain and a little bit of vinegar and then run you know, bouts of hot water for it. And I'll do that as kind of a monthly almost maintenance just so that I don't ever have that issue. I've lived in places where the plumbing was an issue and living in an old house and having to fix plumbing is not something that I'd like to do again. No, no, pretty much. No. I got some cool uh, bottle openers that I need to list. They're not worth like a whole lot, but I think that they're kind of cool. 
it's pretty easy, fairly easy to take a picture of. You know, even that's, that'd be like something I, I'd throw my quarter next to in one of the pictures, you know? I know uh, a reseller who uses one of those color wheels. And I thought about that. I haven't really come across one, though, because I'm so frugal. And I'm like, I don't want to go out of my way to <laughs> buy anything that's really kind of unnecessary. So if it comes to me, then cool. But I think that that's a really cool idea, especially for materials that she does that. That would be Beth. Ten of Hearts. If y'all don't know her, go check her out. She is sweet as pie. Sweet as pie she is. She just started going, I think she just officially started full-time, but um, or is trying the transition, and which is really pretty awesome. She was smart about it and getting herself set up instead of just bam, you know, doing it and, and planning. And she has lives. Wednesday nights. Oh no. What is it? It's it. I want to say that it's eight mountain time, but maybe somebody else will remember. I'm pretty sure that it's eight mountain time. I'm going to say this. Yeah, there's a lot of lives that I, if it's at nighttime, that I can't necessarily jump, always jump on. Um, but I do watch the replays a lot. For sure, I do. She's one of my favorites to watch. Along with Flip and Hustler, my little Elvis singing friend. <laughs> and Wade's Ventures. He's awesome to watch. I'm just giving all these shout outs to people. I know some of them probably don't even know I exist. No, I'm just kidding. Actually, Todd. From Flippin' Hustler and Beth. Yeah, she, they know. I don't know. <laughs> Wait, <no. laughs> I almost choked. <laughs> I'm all <a> spit. <laughs> That's pretty funny. You know, you start watching somebody and you really get to know them and you forget that they don't really realize that you're watching them. But I've watched a lot, a lot of his videos. Um, he was one of the first ones I really started watching a lot of yeah I don't, I don't know how long ago it was I don't know, last year obviously last year last year that was not even how long ago but in the beginning of last year I've, uh, i got these cool little i need to get these posted so we have multiples this was my man's stash collection of days of smoking cigarettes and we are both proud to say that we do not smoke cigarettes anymore but we have all these things i guess are something like he i'm pretty sure collected camel cash or something and then turned it in but these are cool this is one of the ones that there's a, like a multiple of because some of them he wants to keep i don't know why he's borderline holderish whatever <laughs> <laughs> I guess nobody's going to pop up in the chat. That's all right. That'd be like my first two lives. <laughs> I was just singing. I'm surprised that I haven't gotten flagged for that or copyrighted for those. Because all I was doing was singing. And I know that I sang some songs that are I just figured out over the weekend are on the list of songs you can't cover or copyright. I don't know. I need to get a little more detail about about that or find like when I make videos I just use the music that's in the video editing and so I haven't really ever had to worry about that I'm so paranoid always about like doing the wrong thing that's so ridiculous so ridiculous I can be that I just sometimes just won't do it if there's any risk to it I'm like I have almost died way too many times in my life <laughs> to risk anything. And I guess I've probably taken that too far, but you know, being, it's not that I don't live, you know, it's not that I don't have fun in life. And I, uh, cause I do, you know, I don't regret anything that's necessarily happened. I've been through some shields though. Woo. Mm, but 
Yeah, so I haven't posted any of the lighters that have been used because, again, I don't, you know, I don't want something to blow up or I have no idea. I like listing figurines, um, new and old. Um, I like them because they're small. Uh, I could put them in, you know, a small envelope, one of those bubble mailers that I got for free. I'll even either stick it in a smaller bag or I have all kinds of materials that I have gotten for free or paid nothing for. You know, I have all kinds of pieces of like cardboard and stuff. Just, you know, plain Jane, nicely clean. Um, you know, I might cut out a little thing depending on how old it is or what the value. I mean, if it's worth you know, I'm going to take the time. Customer service is key, people. I don't know how many, I probably say that in every single video. <laughs> if I'm talking about the reseller life, you know, any business you do, customer service is key. You know, quality of product, treating it like quality is, I guess, the best way. You know, because this, like, for example, this is a little cake topper. It literally came off of a cake one of my daughters forever ago um it's not worth a whole lot but i was just kind of showing you you know I'll, I'll cut out part of the cardboard and and just half it and then put some a little piece of tape so that if it crunches it's not going to be a big deal you know just another step to take to prevent any refunds and all that you know i thought I mean, there were quite a few things that I guess I didn't necessarily take the time to um, to do properly, especially in the beginning. And I was just in a rush because, yes, you could take the picture, find it real quick, you know, but you need to kind of figure out, number one, that item is sold the listing that you're you know the comp that you're comparing it to and you can you can do that with your phone or even on the pc you can set it to where it filters the, the ones that are sold let me see if i can show you on my cool new phone i don't know how to work this thing still <laughs> well, i can't believe it's 3 11. I don't have to get my kiddos from school today. They're getting picked up by their dad, but I do have a phone call I will have to make. So I know for sure I can't go past four o'clock. See, I get all off track and then I can't remember what I was doing. All these other things were distracting me. Oh, I remember what I was going to do. So when searching for something. <laughs> Hello. Great, Cam. Now you're going to lose all your subscribers, all 25 of them. <laughs> They're going to be like, this lady is a horse advice. <laughs> Sorry. At least I got back on track, though. So, yeah, your little filters. When you find something, let's see, Converse All Stars. I was looking up Converse. One of the last things I searched, you go to your little filters, and it is... There's all kinds of filters you could do. You can get really specific if you really wanted to, but you could even do it in price range. But if you scroll down, under your little filters. Oh, okay. It is, oh boy. Oh boy. Oh yeah, yeah. I did, I clicked the sold items. I moved it over. Hit done, and it will bring up all the ones and even the date that it sold at, which is pretty cool. I think. 
There's definitely a learning curve to to eBay or even even the Facebook like marketplace or Craigslist. I don't really do Craigslist anymore. I don't do I don't list anything at all on Craigslist. I will shop sometimes from Craigslist, but I won't really post anything. And that's just me. I I think Facebook is a little easier. I also like that you can kind of tell if somebody is legit <laughs> uh, easier through Facebook than you can on Craigslist because through Facebook, you can click on their profile. And the number one flag to know that somebody, you know, is fake is if they just created their profile. I mean, I know that there's a very few who are literally just hopping onto these social media networks, but look at when they created their profile for your own safety. It's probably just better, you know, to deal with people who at least have had a profile, you know, for a few months or something, um, you know, and then kind of, I guess, spy on them. You could at least tell sort of that somebody might be well real, which is kind of important. Pop out chat. Sorry, I was looking at the side of my little screen here. I think the next time I'm gonna, cause I'll, I like to take pictures from right behind where I'm at here. It's a white wall. Every wall in our house is white. We rent, so I'm not allowed to paint the walls, but that's all right. You know, work with what matters. But we have this giant TV, and I could really see the chat when the chat is going. It's so ridiculous, right? A TV is. <laughs> oh, there's my dog. Quinkly. Quinkly. She knows. She knows her name. Come on, Queen. Come on. Okay. Come on. Okay. I say hi to the people. Oh, you're so sweet. She's such a good girl. My little Yoda. I love her fro. Throwing it out, man. Bye. Look at the camera. Show them how on fleek your fro is. fro in it! Yeah, I like to show off my dog. My my cute dog. I don't know. Here's another story. So, Violet, um, I went and I think actually it was Craigslist. Somebody had posted about having some dogs, uh, two puppies. One was brown and one was blonde. And I saw the picture of the brown one. So brown, she's a chow, uh, chihuahua schnauzer. And her sister looks just like her. Uh, I, I wish I could have taken both. And that later that day, I or the next day, I regretted it. And we called the lady and she had already sold the other one. But um, so she w used to work at a pound or was working at a pound or something like that on uh, somebody she was related to through marriage, I think it was sister-in-law or something, um, had these puppies and her kids were tormenting the puppies. So she felt because she worked at this pound and all these things, you know, obligated because it was kind of animal abuse um, to try to get these dogs adopted before she, or sorry, take the dogs in. She already had a whole bunch of dogs, other chihuahuas actually. Um, and get them a good home, you know. And so I went and looked at Violet's sister, who was brown, like a chocolate brown, just like her. I was really excited, and I was all convinced that that was the dog I was going to get. And Violet came running up to me instead of the other dog and jumped right in my lap and looked at me like, girl, you won't take me home. I just, I couldn't say no. That's how I've adopted pretty much all the animals that I've got throughout my life is they chose me. <laughs> they chose me. It was 
you know, I was like, I, I would see something else or go in and it just knew into the pound and you, know, you could bring them into the little room and play with them or kind of see the vibe of it. I, I think it's definitely important. The, there's some places that are really cool because you can kind of go through a checklist of exactly what you want and it will filter out like the Denver Dome Friends League. It will filter out, uh, you know, what you want, like a kid friendly dog, you know, all these things. I don't know if they do that everywhere, but so, um, yeah, I've adopted a few animals out of the pound and they, they have always pretty much chosen me by jumping in my lap or doing something. Violet was the first one that I had ever, uh, gotten off of Craigslist actually, uh, it was meant to be, man. It was meant to be for sure. I had this kind of tragic uh, thing happen to an animal before. And uh, it was tragic because people are evil. And it was at the time period. I don't know if you guys ever heard this on the news, but it was on the news about people basically poisoning meat in a ball or meatballs raw throwing them then and them in people's yards and and it was killing animals which is like so sick and disgusting i mean you are messed up if you are going to hurt an animal or a child or whatever like you are i mean because they they just want to be your friend most of the time i mean she can be crazy annoying really really she can you know, being really so kind of hyperactive sometimes, but it's a great feeling when you come into your door and like, you know, she's always so excited. I mean, I can go out and run out to my mailbox and come back and she thinks I've been gone for 10 minutes and she's stoked. So that's pretty, pretty awesome about an animal. For sure, for sure. I need to do something with all this jewelry. What should I do? What should I do with my jewelry? So some of this I obviously need to just know better. I wish, uh, I wish I knew way more about jewelry. So the total cost for everything in here was ninety nine cents. Um, yeah, I mean it's all profit, but you list things so many times that after a certain amount. Cause I don't have a premium store. So it will cost me if I go over my 250 or they don't have any extra discounts, you know, it's what it's 25 cents a listing. I think is what it is. So some of it's just not worth it. And the fact that I have to you know, take pictures and make sure the lighting's all right, especially if it's really shiny, then I might just lot it is what I might do and pull, pull the rest of what's, good i mean it really stinks that i seriously don't know much about jewelry because like this i'm pretty sure there might be some diamonds in her but see i just don't know how to to test it they're so little that i mean it's really really well made which makes me think that maybe it's diamonds because why would you take all this effort to put it uh, I wish, I mean, it's kind of hard to see, but to put something that's not real on there. I might list those. They're just too, I have my ears pierced a bunch of times, but there's some cool stuff though. I have made quite a lot of money off of that one bag. So it was totally worth it you know, to be listing. I found, let's see, what did I find? Um, I see, I, I see bags of jewelry a lot at, um, estate sales, garage sales, not so much at the thrift stores really anymore, but, um, I do find a lot of things that are 99 cent bags, like salt and pepper shakers and all that. And those are, I'm a little pickier just because I want to be able to figure out what it is fairly quickly, just, you know, uh, 
Because that's how I am. I just want, I want it to be worth my while. Pretty much. When I started out on eBay, just posting things that were from around the house, and I still even do that. I, I tend to want to rearrange my house or change everything in my house often. So um, because of that, I you know, we'll decorate. And then when, when I don't want it, then I'll sell it. Some of these, I don't think I'll sell. They're really big. I haven't like, if I were to sell this, it, it's glass. It's huge. Got it for $10. There is a tag on the back of it that, you know, it says it was originally 99 from world market or something like that. It's really cool though. It's like a map, an old world map. I really like it. It's really neat. This is actually exactly what it sort of appears to be. I don't know if you guys can see it. It is a duck taped to the wall with duct tape. Hint, it is duct tape. <laughs> That's pretty funny. Some of this stuff, oh, I've had this forever. I guarantee you that they probably got this from Goodwill. I don't know how long ago. This is actually new. It was at the dollar store. It's uh, be a unicorn in a field of horses. It's a true story. There's some cool things right here. Here's a little owl that is uh, made out of a a buffalo, a buffalo a bison, a buffalo horn, or something like that. Up there is an elephant. That's from some Christmas decorations. She's going to stay up all year because my grandma gave her to me. And I love her. And in my last video, I brought that other thing down, but that just shows that I, you know, I don't have a very big place, so I sometimes have to store things wherever I can. Here's a little dude that I got uh, 50 cents, I think. And I wasn't paying attention. And his little rifle's broken and he sells forever on eBay. So I think I'm just going to donate him because he was on there for quite some time. Like, this isn't necessarily something that I would go straight for. I, I liked that it was a slightly unusual. I also liked that it was labeled on the bottom well, and it was easy to find. You know, all literally inside of the thrift store, I don't always set things right on the ground, but it depends on what it is. I'll find somewhere dark, table dark. I'll find a cave inside a good wheel. No. <laughs> I'll find another area. And I'll set the item down and then do my eBay search of it, you know, the picture to try to find it. And if I could find it and find some comps and some solds, you know, and I think I could make some money off of it, depending on the price of whatever the item is. And then what I can make from it, you know, if it's breakable, it's going to take more time to wrap it up to make sure it's safe and it travels. So safely um you have to keep that in mind that you need it you know if you're going to sell something that could break it better be worth your while like for example i was the, the golf club i was talking about earlier uh that i shipped off that thing took me forever to try to pack like what a doofus brain for even posting that in the first place i should have just stuck to what i know not that golf clubs can't make good money but I just didn't, didn't feel, you know, it was one of those. As a thrifty dad would say, it was, ah, hell nah. <laughs> Something like that. Uh, my whole thing is, is it just took too much effort and it wasn't worth, I didn't realize how hard it was to ship it. So selling a $8, you know, $10 golf club and taking an hour to ship it, not including the fees, you know, and all that, then it just didn't, wasn't worth my while. That's just me though. I swore to myself that I, I wouldn't put a bunch of breakables up on eBay 
in the beginning when I had my own eBay store. And that was just because the person I was listing for, uh, um, I kind of learned that and the fact that, you know, stuff would break or people would, you know, whatever it is. I wasn't the one that was shipping items, but I was researching the items, finding the items, finding the comps, making the listings, every single part of the listing, all the way up until even pushing and posting it. So I did that for quite some time, which was cool. Exhausting, really. And that I did that up until I, um, till, what was that? Was it December, not this recent December, December before that? I don't know, something like that. I'm, get, I'm in my old age, I can't remember nothing. This is my son's or daughter's. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I want oh, to be addicted to my water bottles. I'm picky about water bottles. It's kind of funny. So I don't, I don't like when you touch, you know, touch the mouthpiece. I'm not saying necessarily my hand is like really dirty or anything, but uh, so I like ones that I can either screw off or or push and they flip open. Those are my favorite. The metal ones definitely keep things really, really cold. Sorry, I keep looking up here because my clock is up there. Uh, I turned my loud clock, tick tock, tick tock clock because I didn't want to freak people out. But oh, oh, this whole YouTube thing really gets you cuckoo on the directions. I need to figure out how to do YouTube from Google Hangouts, right? Something like that. I don't know. Maybe I can find somebody that will go live with me and help me figure that out. Or maybe we can even try it out before. I should just ask somebody. The reseller community is pretty, pretty amazing. They really are. There is a lot of people that are very helpful. For sure. Mm, here's a little tip I wrote myself that I guess I'll share. Because I wish kind of somebody would just, I, mean, I, I know I'm, I want to make videos where it's like five mistakes, you know, I made. So it's a lot shorter and just real easy because I'm sure that not everybody is all keen on watching bazillions of hours of me ramble on. <laughs> but, you know, I, I wish that it was much easier to just find out exactly what not to do. <laughs> Uh, and there are videos out there. There are people who do that, but there's far more on the, you know, to show off what to do, which is fine. There's nothing wrong with that. But for me, it's just a little easier to definitely know exactly what not to do right away. Um, like a lesson I learned was, so I tried to figure out whether it was easier or or better to post everything free, fast, you know, free shipping. And I do think that on some things for sure, uh, it is. I currently don't have anything up as free shipping uh, right now, but I always make sure that it is worth it. And a lot of reason why I don't have things up right now is because I was redoing, you know, all my inventory. And so I have kind of all the stuff that's been sitting there, you know, almost like my death pile that was still listed. Um, and they were smaller items, like the ones that I did well or priced well or, you know, a higher dollar. Those all kind of have, have pretty much gone. The rest of the stuff is mostly from little bags. I mean, I think all that jewelry, I mean, that jewelry and some other things. It's just not, I don't even have very much invested in it. And maybe I should just lot it up. I don't know. I used to do a lot of auctions, which was well, if you want to try to make money quicker <laughs> or get people to come into your store for sure is put up a bunch of auctions on the weekend and see what happens in a week. You know, put them up for seven days because every time I've done that, it was like, oh, I need to make sure to make blah, 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 you know, by next, next week. And I'm, maybe it's not the best business way of doing things, but 
I will post or do, do auctions. And I only really do auctions anymore and things that I'm almost like, I'm unsure about, about the amount that I could get, or maybe there's not a lot of comps on it, or maybe there's no comps on it. Uh, if you, if you kind of, you know, the more and more you do this, you're going to figure out you know, what works and what doesn't work. And, and depending on the area you are, you're, you're in, like, you're not, somebody in a smaller town isn't going to have the same resources or sources to thrift or do retail arbitrage like I do being in Denver, Colorado. Um, so you might have to, you know, you can't be so specific, but again, bring up the fact that you should start with things around your house because you already know that you probably like it or maybe you don't. I don't know. Maybe it was a gift. I don't know. You know, some people are like, don't do that. Resell gifts, but uh, I got the train going by in the ghetto. Mm -hmm. I can see it right out. I have this huge window that's like right here. It goes by all the time. All the time. It'll be happy and maybe another story time Monday and I'll tell you about the people and the train. I mean, there's even people that have gotten hit right here for walking along the train track. Luckily that one, the last person lived. That's great, right? What are you doing, dog? Look at my weird dog. There's a cat over there. Sandra. And of course, I said the cat's name, so the dog is. I still have my thing out. Look, see, squirrel, that's what y'all need to tell me. That's what my kids tell me when I get off track or I get a little, start wandering in the store is they, mom, squirrel. And I remember, oh yeah, I need to be doing what I'm doing, right? So yeah, um, the ship, back to the shipping thing. I... I definitely learned that, like, for example, if you do your shipping too high, or let's say the item is priced low, and then you have it, you're trying to make up the cost. Oh, I'm going to post this for not an off cents, but I'm going to charge $19.99 in shipping. Uh, it may work for some people, but um, I think it's kind of like the, the hidden fee thing, you know, that kind of, that, that a lot of people don't well, necessarily like like you go somewhere and you pay for something and there's all these hidden fees because I've had more people not pay for something uh, and it's all been those most of it has been those people that the shipping was too high on the item like the item was two dollars or whatever and the shipping was higher because I was trying to make up for for pricing the item lower I did that quite often and I'm not saying that it's you know, that you have to necessarily be real strict about the shipping because I make, you know, I when I make a little money off of shipping, then right on. Like there's extra costs that you you have to figure out and stuff like that. And I also will, if I do get charged or if I go past my 20, 250 listings and there's that 25 cents, then I'll add it into the shipping price. And I don't have to worry about if I try to promote listings or whatever is, as trying to even worry, you know, that I need to change that. Uh, I have done quite often a lot of promoted listings. I think it's another great way to boost sales. You also need to be smart about it. Obviously, like you don't want to be not making money because you decide to put something on sale. Uh, that's another thing about from a PC to mobile is you just don't have as many opportunities on mobile. Excuse me. I've got a little hiccups here as you do on the PC and, and promoting things like it will do the, the thing where easy pricing on mobile. And I can't find that actually on the PC where if it says anywhere, easy pricing and the easy pricing is where it, it will go down a certain percent 
every, I think it's 10 days or something like that. I don't usually do that unless it's like all this stuff I've had from last year that I'm, I'm going to give it another little shot to sell. And if it doesn't, then either I need to lot it up or I need to make it go away. Um, you know, people don't, yeah, people necessarily don't, uh, Shipping is really just, shipping is the hardest thing to figure out on eBay. There are a lot of videos though, really great videos out there that talk about shipping and all that. You know, it's better to price something high, I think, than it is to price it too low. You know, because worst case is you can move it down. It's not the end of the world, I guess, if something, you price it too low and it sells, but pocket-wise, it might. It might be. Oops. Yeah. I mean, it happens. I think if you have been reselling for a while and you haven't made any mistakes or lost out on a little something, then, you know, bravo to you. But most people make mistakes. So that's what I should have been looking up with my cups. We got all kinds of new cups for Christmas and we were trying to go through our stash because I don't have any more room. I love cups. These are huge. I mean, really, but I'm going to be listing these. They're nothing spectacular, but they are not broken or anything. One of the, here's a tip. Yay. Yay for tips. Here is a, so when I go and I, am sourcing or looking or hunting and I see, you know, I do look for cups. I like when it's funny or um, I like when it is, you know, has a good visual. Um, I have kind of a small little collection, but this is probably a pretty good little visual. I mean, it says man cave where man can be man. You know, it's funny, but one of the, if I found this in the store and I wanted to check it out, like the things that you need to look at where things break is obviously on the handles, right? You know, there's cracks or whatever. And if something's broken, some things you could still sell, sell, but of course you need to probably make sure that it's in the somehow described that it's broken or where it's broken or you're going to take the chance it's going to be returned. And you don't really want that type of reputation like you're not going to have people who come back you know and you probably won't survive if you don't if you continually have things that are broken and people don't know but um so yeah then another thing i always do is i put my finger all the way around and i'll actually maybe i look like a weirdo but um i'll actually you know close my eyes if it's in a really busy place or i'll just try to really focus and just use my hands to sort of feel around on it because when you're in those stores and the lights are so bright, it's really, really hard to tell if something's broken, but you could tell on your, you know, with your fingers. And for those of you that really have working hands or really uh, thick calluses, like some of the men out there, I'm sure, or, or ladies, nothing wrong with working hard. Now I don't get a manicure. That shit costs money. She is. Cussing as bad. So yeah, I feeling around it. It's really kind of a really good trick to avoid buying something that's broken. I've had some really good luck with ceramics, um, ceramic porcelain figurines and stuff like that. Um, it does well. I I like having unique things or selling unique things. I seem to be drawn to it in the store. You know, something that's kind of out of the ordinary or so I'll flock right to it and pick it up. But some ceramics, you know, I, I really have done pretty well on like some of them, not so much, you know, it's hard on some of them. Like here's, I love this little thing. I didn't find this in the thrift store, but um, it has a, some of my, unused inventory numbers because I like to write them in batches, the numbers, so that I know I'm not going to repeat the number. I'm um, also, you know, I have things stashed in certain areas. So I kind of have the letters 
correlating with that area. Um, so like all, all my S's are usually on a, on a shelf somewhere uh, and they're usually bigger items. So I only have, you know, things that are certain sizes for all the S things, but that way I can kind of keep track on what I have wrote down and then just finding it is way easier. Yeah. You start to get high up there in listings and I'm telling you your sanity You'll want to keep your sanity because you'll be making more mistakes if you don't try to stay organized. And it's fairly easy to be semi-organized, you know, at least having maybe an area where your items are that's already listed. Or like, for example, when I go sourcing and there's things that I need to list, you know, I have little crates, milk crates that I actually have them in. Um, they stack like real nice. And, and I also it's a way to kind of help me realize how much I need to either get listed or when I'm like, hmm, where should I list on eBay? I'll go to that crate and pull something out, you know, and then once it's listed, it goes wherever it needs to go or it goes into a container. Yeah. And I showed this on the one before, but maybe y'all didn't watch the one that was just like a live that was already today. So like this has a little lid. It's just like a little file thing. And it just, it goes kind of really well <laughs> underneath my, my bed. But this is another way throughout the year. So I don't do just inventory just once a, once a year. Um, I learned when I was managing a restaurant, we used to do inventory every single week. Um, and then once, you know, of course, once a year. You'd have to turn in all the things and all the paperwork. So it was definitely important to make sure that those were all exact throughout the weeks. But um, when I, throughout the year to check on things, what I like to do is I'll take a container down, just one container. And that will be my goal is to go through that one container. You don't have to be overwhelmed by it. You know, um, if you've been sort of organized about it and staying up on it, then you, you should have a pretty good idea, but things get lost. Like, you know, if you don't have your item listed, um, you know, as a, a certain amount of days, it just stays on there. Uh, but if you have it like seven days or, and then you have, you know, list up to eight times and all that, um, it eventually will drop off. And I don't list things like that right away. I'll do that when I do a sort of an inventory check of containers every, you know, so often. Um, so I'll pick up the A container, pick up the A container and kind of go through that one container. It's not so overwhelming when it's in a smaller thing. I know a lot of people use bigger ones. And if I had the room, I would, I would use bigger ones bigger containers for some of them. I do. I have those like flip ones and Christmas time is a really awesome time to get some storage containers, but you know where a lot of them I, I get is either the dollar tree or from Goodwill or dollar general. Um, they're not that much. The dollar tree, you can't get the big ones, but you can get, you know, buckets or whatever. I just like these containers. Cause like I said, they, they fit really well. Like I, my bed's up higher and I can fit all kinds of them across. And then the other stuff, I have this really old antique chest that, uh, I store a lot of things in, uh, it's like a family heirloom. It's been passed down and it holds up real, real nice. I like it for sure. Oh, sorry, I'm not getting off. I'm gonna have to go here in just a few, which is sad. Today was a good day. Today was a good day. It was a good day. I need to get in the habit of looking up here. You know, I'm all looking at myself. It's weird. Weird to look at yourself. I'm sure I will go live again. So I'm. I'm for sure going to go live like weekly. Uh, I don't want to necessarily set myself to just doing it always at a certain time quite yet until 
you know, I know I'm going to f- really try hard to do it every Monday for sure. But um, throughout the week, it just, you know, it kind of depends. Like I love to go thrifting on Tuesdays. Uh, maybe I should start doing some haul videos or, you know, do some live hauls. I like going live better than I guess editing videos, but I also want to be able to, to help those that, you know, want to just better, I guess, their lives, whether that's through reselling, you know, or just trying to motivate people to, you know, do something. Or like I said, I'm an artiste. I love art. I love to attempt to cook. I love to try to live kind of a little bit of a healthier lifestyle, uh, more of a holistic. Maybe I can multi it, you know. <laughs> I don't know. They say that you absolutely should have a niche for your channels. Well, they say, you like how I say they say, who is they? Anyways, other people on YouTube. <laughs> but I, uh, I don't know. I haven't quite figured that out, I guess. I just wanted to go on YouTube and share my thoughts. Maybe I can help somebody. Maybe people will think I'm crazy. I don't know. I mean, I am sometimes. Or am I? I haven't been singing all crazy in this one. The guy I did myself singing before. I did myself. Well, I just did a little too much, maybe. <laughs> uh, I have a. I'll share this before I go. So I have this little list of my goals for 2019. And at the top of that list, and I have this on, you know, whiteboard and stuff like that too. Uh, it says, are you closer? And I like it because it's a constant reminder that, you know, am I closer to accomplishing whatever it is I'm trying to accomplish. You know, am I making a step in a direction that's gonna positively affect, you know, my end result, basically. You know, because I could sit here and whine and moan and complain, you know, or bored or, or I don't know, broke or, you know, boo-hoo, I have a pacemaker. Well, woe is me. Please feel sorry for me. I can't do anything. I'm just kidding. That's not the case. But instead, you know, I don't want to teach my children that you should have a bunch of excuses. Like, there's an opportunity for a lot of things for everybody. You just have to kind of figure out how to get there. But I love to try to think, you know, are you closer to whatever it is? Because if you're you know, if you're sitting there thinking you're bored or, you know, you're feeling guilty because you just binge watch Netflix, you know, for 10 hours. And I'm not saying that that's not wrong to do. Like, I think we all need a day to just breathe for a second. But, you know, if you're if you're watching TV all day and it's distracting and you feel guilty because you're watching and you can get nothing done, like the only person really honestly stopping you is you. You know, you are the reason. So you got to think to yourself, like, if you want things to happen, like, for example, I want to move away from the train. I'm over the train. The train can go away. Okay, the train obviously can't go away. I need to go away. I can sit here and continue to complain over and over and over about the train, and I'm sure I will in future lives. But if I want to change my situation or I don't want to be around the train, you know, the train, I need to change my situation. I'm not going to sit here necessarily. And oh, I'm never going to make it. Well, I'm going to obviously look down at my little list or see wherever I have it written in my house, you know, or even if you do it on post-it notes, are you closer? So I'm going to leave y'all with that and ask you, are you closer to accomplishing whatever it is you want to do you know is it getting in shape is it eating better is it doing a hobby more you know is it reselling you know is it spending more time with your kids like you need to quit with the excuses and figure out how you're gonna get there it might be hard but hard is good you know it's scary 
but I'm telling you that it's totally worth it every second. Every second when you get to that end result will be worth all the hurdles that you were trying to jump. So on that note, we will end this. I appreciate anybody who watches my lives. Feel free to like or dislike. I hope that you like. Oh, please, please, sir. Please, ma'am, like my post or my, 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 my YouTube video. I hope that you all have a wonderful day. Feel free to subscribe wherever that little subscribe thing is going to pop up at. <laughs> and maybe hit the bell for future lives. I look forward to future conversations and also learning from everybody else. I appreciate the reseller a community. I love you all. I hope you all have a wonderful day. And remember, if you don't you know, shoot, you need to shoot for the moon because if you miss, you'll land among the stars. Toodles for now. Much love to all on this beautiful day. Good. Bye.